What is going on everyone? Welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so glad you guys decided to tune in for this one and I am so sorry that it's been so long. First and foremost, I apologize that it has been so long in between episodes. My reason for that is it's the slow season. We just don't have a whole lot of content to put out and I'm not gonna put out content that I don't think is 110%. It's the only thing I stand for and it's the only thing that I um, am going to, to show you guys because I'm not in it for just the views or the subscribers. That's not why I do things. I do things to impact people and grow a better garden uh, as well as to, uh, to help people feel motivated that they can do it themselves. So I'm not just gonna throw something out just to throw it out. And so, uh, so that's part of the reason. And the other part of the reason is because as many of you know, Mrs. Emma Gardner and I are diligently, and I mean every single day diligent, all day long, down packing seeds for the 2018 gardening season. So all of you that have supported the seed store before, you guys have, have been asking us, hey, why is the store completely empty? Why is everything out of stock? The reason is because there is an, kind of an off season that we have to, at some point, dedicate to packing seeds for the next gardening season. And if we are constantly getting seed orders in, you can still buy other stuff. There's still Trifecta and other merchandise there you can check out if you, if you need something. But as far as seeds go, um, we, we emptied the seed store completely of all the 2017 seeds, and we're going to be slowly restocking for the 2018 gardening season, and we're hoping to be open by our usual launch date of early November. So stay tuned for it. We're going to have a ton of new varieties. It's going to be super exciting because we understand that there's a lot of people in Texas and Southern California and Florida and places like that that have really hot weather. They need to get growing before 2018 actually even arrives. And so we understand that. And that's why we are, uh, we're working as fast as we can and we will definitely keep you all posted. Uh, so the reason why I'm coming today is because a lot of you have been asking for varieties that we grew this year that we absolutely loved and that we'll be growing next year. As you all know, we try varieties uh, every single year. We try new varieties that we don't know how they're going to do and sometimes we have a winner, sometimes we have a loser. And I wanted to show you guys some of the winners this year that we had because I think it's a great thing to highlight because sometimes people, they look at all the varieties out there and they say, I have no clue what to grow. I don't know what to grow. And so the bottom line is that, yes, gardening is not a one size fits all solution. I understand that. And a variety that I show you today might be a very poor producing variety for you and you might hate it. It might not fit your needs. I totally understand that. The reason for me showing varieties that we absolutely loved this year that we grew is because it does give people at least a rough idea of how some varieties are producing for me in my area. So the first one that I'm sitting right by is my favorite example of that. And I only grew one plant and it's, it seems like every single year when you hit a winter and you only grow one plant, because remember we only dedicate about 10% of the total garden to new varieties. And so when you're talking about peppers, 10% of, of all the peppers, it's usually right around like one to two plants. And so we tried two new peppers this year. And so we only had room, for, <laughs> we only had room uh, for one plant of each variety. And so we tried one and absolutely loved it. And that was, well, just come on in close. I'll show you, I'll show you before I, before I announce it. I'm sure you probably already know because I've been raving about it on Facebook all the time. So check it out. That variety is Serrano peppers. This was the first year we ever grew Serrano peppers. I know, I don't know why it took me so long, but it is, wow. This thing is the most productive plant in the entire garden. Even though it takes a little while to ripen, these peppers are so delicious. They're comparable in heat to a jalapeno, but they're not as aggressive as a heat. They don't just attack your whole mouth. It's more of just like a, like a, like a tongue burn. It's not like a whole mouth burn. So they're actually really delicious. In, uh, we use them in Asian cooking. We use them in, in uh, Mexican cooking. We'll throw them, and we'll just throw them really small slices into a, a wrap. Uh, we'll slow, we'll, I mean, we just do anything and everything with them. We've pickled them. We've thrown them into uh, Jardinera peppers. Um, we've just done so much with these. And this one plant here has produced more peppers than I think all the plants combined. Now, granted, the peppers are smaller, but still, I mean, this plant is absolutely loaded with peppers. I mean, check out all the peppers there. It's just absolutely laden. Now, check out over here. I'm going to push you guys 
over. Check this out. Look at this. This is, look at this. Look at that. The plant has actually fallen over and it's actually been brought to its knees by how many peppers are there. And these, I mean, I love, I just love this color here. Look at this color. Look at how deep red that is. This is the most beautiful pepper that we've ever grown. It's also the most productive pepper we've ever grown. And while it takes a little bit longer to ripen, we still are having enough time in our growing season to, to ripen them. I was always worried that we wouldn't have enough time in our growing season. I decided to try it this year, and I'm really thrilled that we did, because I'll be growing it every single year from now on. All right, and the second variety we tried this year that we absolutely loved is a variety that we've grown in the past, but didn't love. I don't know why. Sometimes I will revisit varieties. Sometimes it's just, I decide to give them a second chance. But the second chance plant was the red pear tomato. Now we've grown it probably four or five years ago, and I liked it, I just didn't, I didn't love how easily it cracked. And I think what made me revisit it was the fact that I've since then improvised my growing methods and I've started to revisit some of those varieties that didn't do that well because I've been kind of thinking, well, maybe it was my growing methods that were the, the reason why they weren't producing very well. And I think that was the case with this one here. So red pear, as everyone always raves about, is some of the most productive tomatoes you could possibly grow. And I love growing cherry tomatoes because you just get so much per plant that their yield, and they also ripen faster as well, their yield is just almost unmatched. And this plant here has been producing just incredible, incredible cherry tomatoes. And they're, whoa, they're super juicy. They're really sweet and they produce, I mean, check this out. Look how much these things are producing. So yeah, I know the plant doesn't look the best. That's because it's the end of the season and none of the plants look great. But look, just look at how many tomatoes are still on this plant. And the plant just keeps going and going and going and it just keeps producing. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna have some to freeze, we're gonna have some to dehydrate, and we're gonna have some to sun dry inside the oven. So yes, we do give second chance to plants sometimes and I'm kind of glad we did. So the next one that I decided I would show you is uh, one that I actually was quite surprised by. And it's one that we really have, I mean, we've had the opportunity to grow. I just don't know why we haven't ever grown it. And so um, that variety is actually a spinach variety, believe it or not. And it's called Virofle. Check it out. This is Virofle spinach. Virofle spinach is one of the most heat tolerant varieties of spinach that we have found. It's obviously not as heat tolerant as like a Malabar spinach or a, you know, some of your more tropical spinaches that aren't really a spinach, but they taste and grow similar to spinach. These are a true spinach and they are very heat tolerant. And that's very good for us because um, whether we're growing them for a spring crop or a fall crop, they still have to endure some hot weather. In the spring, we typically only have about a month of spring weather before it just heats right up and, and gets into the 70s and 80s. And it's, it's, I mean, it's nice for a gardener, but it's not nice for a gardener that likes spinach because spinach just can't handle that type of heat. They need it very cool. They need it in the 50s and 60s to do, to do well. And so uh, Virafle spinach, we found, can actually handle some, not all, of that weather and produced quite a lot longer, right around 50 times, 50% uh, longer. So, uh, I mean, that was great for us. And also another thing is that it goes to seed very easily, uh, just like any other uh, spinach does, but then sprouts very, very early in the, in the late summer, early fall, and it grows very quickly. So uh, obviously when it's cooler, plants grow slower, and that's why in the spring it does not grow as fast. But when you plant it, uh, just as a seed for a fall crop, or it drops its seed for a fall crop that we always, that's how we always grow our fall crop of spinach, is we let the seed drop and it will actually grow extremely fast because it's a, it's a fast growing type of spinach. So it's not only very heat tolerant, it's fast growing. It tastes just like any other type of spinach. And it's a very sweet leaf. A lot of times spinach gets rather bitter in the, in the hot sun uh, of summer and, and fall and, and you know, things like that. It's just too hot. It just gets too bitter. But it's actually a very buttery, uh, crisp spinach, even during hot weather. So we love this variety, and it's going to be one that we're going to grow rather than the Bloomsdale Longstanding, which is a great variety. Don't get me wrong. We've grown it for years. I just don't love it as much as the Viraflay. 
All right, and so the final plant that we decided we would grow next year that we absolutely loved this year, that we grew for the very first time, was Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Now, it's, it, it was in this bed. It's since fallen over and is completely laid limp. But the reason why we are letting it lay limp is because the berries take a while to ripen. That's the only downside to this plant. It produces incredible amounts of berries. It doesn't take up that much space. And the berries that are there are so incredible. I have one here, and I thought I'd give you a taste test on camera. Uh, but it's a variety that we, ha I mean, everyone has been speaking so highly about. It's just we didn't really ever give it the time of day to grow it. And so we grew it, and it's kind of one of those things. It's like, wow, I, I can finally see what everyone has been raving about. So you want to wait till the berries are, are completely dry and have fallen on the ground. If they're green and they're still on the plant, don't eat them yet. You want them to be dry and the, the, the husk to be kind of papery and they'll kind of have an orangey color to them. They should not be green. Uh, they're very tart and kind of tart slash bitter when they're green. But when they're, they're orange like this, they're very delicious. Give you a taste test. Oh my gosh. It's, it's like a treat every single time I bite into it. It is, it's completely forget tomato. People say it tastes like tomato. I think it throws people off because it does not I mean, it tastes like tomato-esque, but it's nowhere near a tomato. It's, it is like part pineapple, the actual fruit pineapple, part tomato with a slight hint of green pepper. It is so sweet that I absolutely consider this a fruit rather than a vegetable. Um, and uh, I can't find any more here. I'm gonna have to wait for some more to, ooh, here's one. Ah, shoot, that one's green. Okay, well, either way. So um, yeah, they're delicious. They're a great snack. I'll definitely be growing at least one or two plants um, in, in the future. And it's just, it's one that we decided we'd grow this year and we're glad that we did. So there you go. There are the varieties that we grew this year for the very first time and decided we'd grow them again next year. I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. I do recommend trying these varieties or if you have tried them in the past, let, let me know in the comments box how they grew for you. And if you want a teaser as to what's kind of coming up in the future, because everyone always says, you know, hey, I, I want to see what's kind of coming up on future episodes. I don't always know what we're going to film, but I do know one thing that we're going to film coming up, uh, if not next episode, is green beans. Not to harvest, since we've already done that. We've let the green beans stay on the, stay on the plant, and we've actually let them dry because we're going to be saving green bean seeds to show you all how you can save your own seeds so that you don't have to go out and buy them, but instead keep growing your own seed so they get better for you and uh, grow your own heirlooms. So as always, this is Luke from the On My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.